for this video this time, I thought I should start off by um, showing a couple of things from the lofting that I didn't show in the last one. Uh, one thing we've just done is that Hazel and I have just marked out the water line on the floor here. And to do that, we measured out from the table of offsets and actually from the plans. Marked it each end, pulled a, a line through there, a string. And then um, I went along the string and marked on each station where the string crossed the station and used a, a big heavy piece of Douglas fir as a straight edge. It was nice and straight. I added up, used a straight edge to draw the water line, line through there. That was one thing. Now, on the table of offsets, all of the measurements are based on a baseline that is actually the bottom of the keel. But clearly I haven't drawn the keel here. So the first thing I had to do was to reduce all dimensions by, by that amount so that the bottom of the chine curve is, fits my baseline. So I had to uh, subtract three feet, actually I had to subtract two feet 11. and then three quarters from uh, all of the measurements to get that. So uh, easily done, you just take three feet off and then add a quarter of an inch. Um, did that. Now, the other thing I didn't show was how we drew the curves. And I did say that I used the table of offsets to, to measure out all the measurements onto the grid. And then uh, let's say we, we take this, we take the shear line. And what I then did was I marked it out on the grid each point. And I took a lovely four inch nail and knocked it into the plywood on each point. Like that, just put them down there. And I've got just some bits of thin wood. These were laid on my saw, some off cuts I had. Um, I got somebody, it was Elizabeth, she's not here at the moment, to hold the wood one end against the nail. I'll put it on the inside, it'll simulate that, but just clearly Elizabeth held it on the outside. I built the piece, bent the piece of wood around the nails making sure to hold it only at the nails and then marked with a pen the curve out. And clearly that ends wrong because it's inside the nail at the moment, but it was outside the nail. But and just drew the curves like that, moving along, making sure to only hold at the nails. If you hold it in between, you, you, you change the curve, but if you hold it at the nails, it comes around and out comes out right. Um, not the perfect piece of wood, this one, because there's a knot in there. Not too bad that way around, but to watch out for knots because they don't bend through. But that's how we did it, to, to mark out the curves. The next job is, is um, well, the first job I've decided to do is to, is to laminate the stem. Um, I prepared some pieces of mahogany. These are, was mahogany tongue and groove boards that I found in um, here in Germany we have a thing called Spermol, which is kind of extra garbage. It's stuff that doesn't go in the bin, but, but things that can be put out when the garbage truck comes around and picks them up. And these were all out in being thrown away in the rubbish, in the garbage. Uh, there was a big stack of them. I picked them up years ago. I saw them and instantly knew, oh, that's useful. So there's a lot of recycled mahogany boards. They're one centimeter thick, three eighths of three eighths of an inch roughly. Um, I've run them through the saw to take the tongues and grooves off each side. They're now roughly speaking two inches wide and when they're glued up that way they'll be roughly two inches thick. Um, so they're ready for the start of the stem and working on the boards here I've screwed as you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten angle brackets around the curve of the stem as it's drawn out on the from the lofting lines. Uh, I've laid them there, I've put some screws through the boards, just uh, 15 mil screws I think they were, seemed to hold solid enough. I've, I've tried it, I've got my clamps ready, I've, I've put some pieces around, checked everything works well, I've tried it with a square to make sure it, it sits nicely. So we're just about ready to start gluing up the stem. 
First job will be to lay some plastic sheet down so that our glued up stem, our laminated stem, doesn't glue to the boards underneath. So I'll put some plastic sheet down um, and then we'll spread glue on those prepared pieces, lay them in there, bend them round, clamp them up and uh, I'll show you how that goes in a minute. So today I'm going to do it in two steps. So I've got five of these boards to glue up. Today I'm just going to glue two together. I'm worried about five in one go being too much. I don't want to twist any of the, anything. So I'll glue two today and the other three on there tomorrow. I'm using Colano Semperoc 60 glue. Marvellous waterproof glue, um, which I've done some experiments with. I'm very happy with. I've read up on the web. Other builders have used it. It seems to be marvellous glue. It's easy. It's clean to use. No mixing up epoxy. Um, just going to spread some out on the first board here. And then the whole length. Plastic spreader here. Let's just sort of see if that's enough. Probably will do. The glue itself swells up, so it should be fine. Put it on the other hand, it? Covered. It's a gap filling glue. Um, polyurethane, I believe. Don't quote me on that. It's a foaming glue, that's for sure. Spread that out along the length. If any, any parts look too dry, come back and put a bit more glue on there. It's important that it glues its whole length all the way along. Looks like we need a little bit more. Not too dry spot still. Spread a little bit more on there. Mm. Get on my legs. See how that goes. So, I should put some plastic gloves on. If you turn around, Hazel, I see I've laid some plastic sheet out over those angle brackets. I'm going to put this one, I'm going to spread the glue on down in here. Oh, this top angle bracket is there, we need to project beyond that. Actually, it's probably better to start at the other end. And get the second one. And that in there, uh, to there like that. Okay. And pull that round, even up the ends a bit. Right. So here's our the pink line, our chine line. So we can go up a bit further. That's looking quite good. The first bracket is there. That's the bottom of the chine. The first bracket, so we can go up a little bit further. Fine, there's the bracket. Let's get a clamp on there. Turn it up a bit. Clamps have been used with epoxy in the past. She sticks them pretty well shut or gets on all over them. It makes them not slide quite as well as they should do. We'll get another clamp on that end later, but that's a good start. 
It's important to make sure that your plastic doesn't get up between the pieces of wood. So next one, I'm going to the next bracket there. But just clamp that one up there. You can come back and tighten them up later. Next bracket is there. I haven't missed one like that. That's good. Check that they're down nice and even. There. Curves a bit tighter here. I've got the brackets closer together. To make, ow, I just splint it there. Oh, yeah, that's hot. That's a good one. Oh, it's still in there. Good. Is that right? Make sure that they're in line. And all the way down. Good. Bracket is there. That's the middle. Squeezing up, that's nice, make sure the plastic's not caught up in it. That's good. Next bracket's right there. This, the this one will pull in a fair way, I think. Yeah, pull it in. There, which is at the very top. There, squeeze it up. Yeah, see, as we pull that one in, this one went loose. There it comes. See the glue squeezing out, that's a nice sign. Glue squeezing out all the way around there, need a clamp on the end. Still we go, that one's looking good. Glue squeezing it out. That's good. That's good. Might need another clamp in there. Get another two or three in a minute. A little high there, so if we just get that's better. The glue helps it slide on itself so you can reposition fairly effectively. That's looking good. So I should get another clamp there, maybe another one, a few to go in between, one at the end, 
and uh, we'll come back to it in a tick. So I've just grabbed a few more clamps, probably a couple on the end. This end will be cut off, but nice to have it up nice and straight and tight and glued along its length. And that's looking quite good. Quite a big gap there, even though it looks good, I should put one between there. Here I'd like to put one on. Just clamp a little bit up in the middle there. Oh no, it doesn't seem to make much difference. Certainly one on the very end here. Again, this comes on too far at the moment. The ends will be trimmed off. But might as well get it good all, all the way along the length. And I'll put another one on there as well. This has got one. So we leave that now until tomorrow. When it's dried, it should stay in that shape. Tomorrow we'll layer up the last three pieces on there and uh, see what the finished article looks like. It's about right to me. Um, that curve looks good. That curve looks good. I can see the glue oozing out. All the way along, basically. Yeah, fine. Good, that's that.